Has it been a while since you flipped that thermostat from heat to cool? Turn to the experts at Griffith Energy Services before you do for an $88 AC start and check to make sure your AC is in tip-top shape. Griffith specializes in carrier, but services all brands. Visit GriffithEnergyServices.com today. Your local carrier expert. That's GriffithEnergyServices.com. License number MDHVACR01-2278. Griffith Energy Services. Doggone dependable. This is Robert Langdon. I teach symbology. The suspect called him. From the author of The Da Vinci Code. He wants me to locate an ancient portal. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. Five enter detention. I don't think he's breathing. Jesus. I'm calling 911. Four come out alive. Simon's dead. They think one of us did it. Based on the number one New York Times bestseller, One of Us is Lying, a brand new series. Streaming only on Peacock. You will solve the great mystery. Streaming only on Peacock. This is Robert Langdon. The suspect called him. I teach symbology. He wants me to locate an ancient portal buried within the capital. From the author of The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. It's your dad. The people who took him want me to find a piece of a very old puzzle. And executive producers Ron Howard and Brian Grazer. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. Make your next career move your best. Verizon Retail offers the potential to earn up to $50,000 annually and amazing benefits starting on day one, including product discounts and tuition assistance. Apply today at verizon.com forward slash retail careers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of A Walk Through the Multiverse. I'm your host, Joe, and on today's episode, we are going, going to talk about uh, a couple trailers that came out. We're going to talk about an episode of Why the Last Man. And I was going to go over some news. There was some news that came over my feed. But I'll be completely honest with you. I have not had a chance to look at the news uh, in the past week. It's been a very busy week for me. And instead of giving you guys half-assed news, I'm actually going to look into it and and actually report the news properly to you uh, next episode when I have news to report. That being said, start out by telling you guys that this show is part of the Geek Ultimate Alliance Network that has eight shows. Eight shows? Yeah, seven days a week. Um, you know, on Sundays, we've got a slice of film uh, bi weekly every Sunday. Mondays alternates between A Walk Through the Multiverse and Ranger Alliance. Tuesdays is DC Alliance. Wednesday is Superhero Discussion. Thursdays, weekly now, is Star Wars Alliance. Fridays is Marvel Alliance. And Saturdays is this show, uh, bi-weekly at the moment. So, uh, also, Star Wars Alliance, Ranger Alliance... No, not Ranger Alliance. Uh, Star Wars Alliance, Marvel Alliance, and DC Alliance all have their own feeds. Uh, so you can either go follow their feeds separately, or if you want to stick with the Geek Ultimate Alliance, you can stay here. And you'll, you'll get every single show, obviously. Or you can follow both. You know, just, that's what I do. And I download both. I only listen to one of them, but, you know, at least they get the downloads. Uh, all three of those uh, also go live on the Geekverse YouTube channel. Um, DC Alliance is live Monday nights. Star Wars Alliance is live Wednesday nights. And Marvel Alliance is live Thursday nights. Uh, and then, obviously, the next day, the shows go live on the feed. We also have a Patreon. So, if you want to throw some money at us, you could... Uh, a, a dollar will just say thank you, and we def definitely greatly appreciate it. And five dollars will get you early access, uh, two episodes, ad-free episodes, and episodes specifically for Patreon. Uh, perfect example is the last Ronin that Travis is just, you know, pining to record, which hopefully sometime, I think maybe next week, I, th I know we just have to talk about it, we gotta get figured out, it's myself, Travis, Chris, and Clay, uh, we will get that recorded, we've all read it, we've all loved it, um, I will definitely have to reread it since it's been like two weeks, but... Guaranteed by the time that we record that and it comes out for the patrons, uh, issue five should be out, probably. 
Uh, but that being said, because we are a Patreon supported network, uh, we do have ads. Uh, we don't c- control the ads. You guys, you guys know the drill. They're they're ads. So, um, okay. So, like I said, I'm gonna skip over news for this episode, um, and I'm going to jump right into talking about why the last man. <clears throat> this latest episode, uh, I think it's called Weird Al is Dead. If, uh, if I remember correctly, let me double check that real quick. I'm going to banter because I don't want to edit if I can avoid it. Uh, yeah, Weird Al is dead. Thank you. <laughs> um, this episode, so, okay, I'm going to set the board because the last time I talked about Why the Last Man, uh, I was doing four episodes and instead of going over each episode as it was, I just kind of compiled everything together. Um... So, the players that we have on the board at the moment, we've got Agent 355, who, on orders from the president, President Brown, is taking her son, Yorick. Uh, she was supposed to go to Boston to find this doctor, Dr. Allison Mann, to help maybe figure out a, a way to clone Yorick. Or clone males, I guess. Uh, in the process of doing that, they found out, or they figured out, once they found her in Boston, uh, Allison, that all of her lab equipment is busted and they have to go to San Francisco. So they are on their way to San Francisco at this moment. Uh, I will also have to say that 355 lied to Yorick, saying that she had gotten in contact with uh, the president with his mom to give the go ahead to go to San Francisco. We also have uh, York's sister, Hero. She is with her friend Sam, who last episode they were also with uh, a one of the president's aides, the previous president's aides. It's not Jennifer because that's Jennifer Brown. Uh, I cannot remember her name, but she's been important. Uh, her, her and her daughter, uh, Mac, uh, they have been obviously important to the series. They're, they're characters that we're focusing on from time to time. Um, they, these four, they found each other. Uh, Hero was able to help Mac. She had hurt herself, uh, had, her leg had gotten stabbed by a, a, a spade, uh, and so Hero was, they found her and they were trying to get, to stop being, um, infected. So as they were doing that, they ran into these other females that, um, one of them was injured and Hero was able to, uh, convince this group of, of females that she could help save their injured friend. So they all brought them back to their base and hero kind of did. Uh, but then the, uh, boss, uh, whose name I just, I cannot remember off the top of my head. Um, Mandy, no, man, it's not man. Whatever. She's the boss. Um, uh, I I know I like I recognize her I I know who it is, uh, but I cannot. Just, I just can't think of her name, literally because I just saw her, you know, two weeks ago when I watched the episode, and then this episode that I was watching at work. But whatever. Um. So she comes in and she sees what's going on, and she kills the like just takes out a gun and shoots the girl that's dying or saved whatever. Um. So I didn't know what that was about, but it is what it is. Uh, then we go to President Brown, who is, you know, she had, like I said earlier, she had con- not contracted, but told Agent 355 to keep York safe. Uh, she has got her aide who knows York's still alive. And those those are the only two. Everybody else has no idea. Um what, but what has happened, obviously, in, like, episode two or three, uh, 355, or Sarah, I think is what they're calling her, because she took that name, but whatever, um, 
along with the two pilots who also knew that York was alive. They took two planes. It wasn't said that 355, you know, killed the two pilots. But it was heavily implied. Um, I'm pretty sure she probably, like, sabotaged the, the copter. And then went off. Uh, so what happened in the last episode is that they found the copters. They had crashed. Air quotes crashed. And uh, the general who was in charge of it all is just trying to investigate. And so as of right now, President Brown thinks that her son is dead. Uh, we also get uh, a little subplot with uh, Kim. Yeah, Kim Kimberly who is the previous president's daughter. Uh, she is trying to basically, I'm not going to say usurp President Brown, but trying to be like, hey, we know politics too. Why don't you let us in on the meetings? Uh, it doesn't help that President Brown, Jennifer Brown, was put into place because it, obviously it follows the, the chain, of, chain of command. No, that's not the right word. Designated Survivor is, uh, that's, I just think of the show. But, like, it, you know, President is not, if President's dead, it goes to the VP. And then if VP's not around, it goes to, like, the Speaker of the House or, or something. It just, it keeps following that, that lineage. And the next woman that would have been in charge uh, was lost in Israel, I believe. Uh, so they had no idea which means that following the the rule, it then becomes uh, onto Jennifer Brown's shoulders. Once it was revealed that this actual lady is alive, um, now it became a political play of like, all right, well, she's supposed to be the boss, but she, but she wasn't here the last month and a half while we were trying to scrape together and figure out what's going on. But now she is back, and it's you, it's a pissing contest right now, um, and people are just trying to to get into the right positions. You know, it's just just to see who's going to kind of win out. Um, and obviously, one's a Republican, one's a Democrat, so it's going to be. I know, I know, guys, keep politics out of comics. So I'm sorry, but it's yeah, it's just the way it is. Um, who is that? Everybody, all the characters. I think that's. Everybody at the moment. All right, so we start out this episode, and ooh, I'm already confusing it with James Bond. That's not a good sign. Episode starts out. We got Yurik uh, with three five five and and Doctor Allison Man. They are holed up. No, sorry, not hold up. They're they're hiding out. And Yurik, who is, you know, I'm not gonna say off on his own, but he they're. Um, by this chapel, I guess. And they start hearing the song playing. Or he starts hearing these women singing a cappella, And he goes to investigate it. Well, and then I, I mentioned this last episode. One thing I do like that the comic... Um, they didn't address in the comic, or at least they didn't address on the issues that I am currently at. Because I'm somewhere in, like, volume three at the moment. Um, that trans women are around, and it's okay. Like, they are out and about, and, you know, they look like a man, and it's fine. Because everybody knows, in this world, everybody is already dead set. Anybody with a Y chromosome, all the men are dead. Well, anybody with a Y chromosome, I should say. Um, so they just see York as trans. And he's able to, you know, take the mask off from time to time and and just be. Which I think he definitely is a positive for the show. Um, I think if they had kept him in the mask constantly, it would have been uh, annoying, probably. But, no, this so far... Be great. So they they come up to this thing, and they are just hearing, listening to these women singing, and they're singing Radiohead, which is which is pretty awesome. 
But as they're walking around and enjoying it, um, 355 comes up and is trying to pull York out, but he kind of convinces her to just stay and just kind of be in the moment. And so of the three of them, Allison is there as well. They're just like, okay, cool. So we're, we're in the moment. We're, we're having a good time. Until 355 sees somebody walking around asking, you know, all these people if they've seen, they, she's got this picture, and she's like, have you seen this person? Have you seen this person? Um, and she, 355, kind of convinces Yorick that, hey, they're, these guys are probably cops, they're after you. Until we see that she's actually looking for 355. These are army agents uh, sent by the general that is working with president Brown, um, to track down three, five, five, because she's not exactly who she says she is, which president Brown knows, but nobody else does. So it's, you're, you're doing the political play of trying to like, she's trying to keep this quiet because, this agent is protecting her son, but now this general who is trying to investigate why these helicopters went down and who could be uh, involved in it, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, that basically resolves in this episode. They uh, they are leading them. They're going to try to lead them into a trap, quote unquote. The the these army uh, army people, army women. Um, because I, I can't say army men, because there's no men. It's an army woman. Um, into this trap, into this church. Uh, basically, what's going on is is Allison floats out the idea of, hey, so we don't really owe 355 anything. We should just leave. And York's, no, I can't. She's, she's protecting me and all this until he kind of gets in a fight with her. And 355 basically tells him, look, you're just an assignment. We're not friends. Fuck off. Um, and he's like, all right, fine. We're going to leave. They don't end up killing any of the army people because they do get uh, ambushed in the woods as they're trying to leave. Um, but they definitely... <laughs> it was real close. Like, 355 was like, did did this one see your face, Yorick? Did, did this one army lady see your face? And he's like, no, no, of course not. No, no, I don't think... No, no. Because she definitely would have just killed her right there and then. Um, so that's that. Uh, it's obvious that as this is going on, it's being reported back, you know, live to the general who's in the war room with with President Brown and with the the one lady who should be president but is not. And it's like, all right, so I can tell you're hiding something, but what are you hiding kind of a thing? Um, it's, it, Brown is very nervous with what's going on because it's her son. Um, the more interesting thing though, so that, I mean, that, that kind of wraps up their, oh, also Kimberly is trying to blackmail, um, President Brown's aide, the one that knows about Yurik, because she, last episode or episode before, uh, she found out that the aide is pregnant but she is trying to keep it quiet for the moment, which, look, you already know this This woman is, is trying to blackmail you. Go tell the president. Go, go tell Brown that, hey, I'm pregnant. Kimberly's trying to blackmail me. Here you go. Problem solved. It's not going to be that way because this is a fucking post-apocalyptic world that they don't. Common sense is just out the window, apparently. Understandably, I get it though. Like it, it's, I, I, well, yes, it's it's fine. It makes it's a more compelling story. All right, so that 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 wraps up that aspect for the, for the most part. Um, go back to Hero, and now they are, like I said, they're in this Costco, and the leader, I, God, I really wish I could remember her name, but she is basically, um. I'm not going to say she's going to recruit Hero or uh, Nora. Nora. I think it's Nora. Uh, who is the 
was the president's aide from before, previous president, uh, Nora and Mac. Um, but she's definitely like not letting them off, uh, Matt or Nora especially, uh, because she she used to be a uh, police officer and the the leader here, I, and she um, once everything fell, she's like, I'm I'm going to lead. And I'm going to save these people. And so they that's why they're holed up in a Costco. And they have it blocked off. There's one way in, one way out. Um, there is a, a moment where this group of people, like four four adults and a child show up and they're just they're looking for supplies. And the leader lady comes out and is like, Sorry, we have no supplies, just you better go about your way. Um, and I think it's more of a know the people you you have uh and the only reason that hero and company are around is because hero is a doctor or nurse well ambulance sorry emt so she has experience uh if she didn't have that i don't think they that this leader would have kept them or allowed them to stay um but here we are so we see that play out, and Nora sees a play out, and she's like, this is scary. But also at this time, the leader has told Nora, look, you need to stop being so timid and being so scared. Men are gone. Like, you just be yourself. So she does. Like, at, at one point, toward the end of the episode, uh, and for those of you who have read the comics, these are the Amazons. Um it wasn't, I had an inkling of that's who it was at the end of the last episode. It is basically official because the leader lady kind of says, like, she starts talking about the Amazons. And then, um, toward the end of the episode, they're at a quote-unquote funeral where one of the girls, uh, decides to d- die like she's killing off her old self, but then she gets reborn. And when they uh, make her reborn, or when she comes out of being rebirthed, um, she says her name is Athena. I think her name was Nancy, and now it's Athena. Um, so yeah, these are the Amazons, and in the comics, the Amazons are I'm not gonna say a terrorist group, but they definitely um, have an no. They don't have an agenda. Um, they are crazy. Uh, I can't even say that honestly without without sounding bad. Basically, this um, this group, the, the these Amazons, they're actually they are very positive in in in, in all reality. They are they're helping each other. They're 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 pushing each other to be better like they actually if i didn't know that the group was gonna be like crazy like this actually would be a good place um one thing that they did that they did show which was interesting and i don't i don't know if it's gonna come into play more because they didn't actually no one else had this but one thing that this in the comics that this made um the amazon distinct was they willingly uh, cut off one of their breasts. And they in the comic, they, they say it as, oh yeah, the, the rumor is that they, they did that because in the Amazons of old, they did it so that they can shoot better with their bow and arrow. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, yeah, I guess it doesn't make any sense, but, you know. Um, but the leader has a, a breast removed, and it, at one point she's like she's changing her shirt, and Nora sees this, and I, they're making it out like it was a breast cancer thing. So I, I don't know if that's what they're gonna stick with, because nobody else had any of like their breast removed, uh, one of them removed. But I don't know, in all honesty. Um, what, the one thing I find interesting about this 
part is in the comics, Hero joins the team. Like, they're, she's part of the Amazons. And, it, again, I'm only so far, so I don't know if they ever explain why. Because I guarantee um, she'll come back. Like, where I'm at in the comics, she has returned, but now she is in, like being a captive. I'm using air quotes there. So, I, I guarantee she's going to come back in the comics. Um, but, so, but I don't know if the story ever gets explained why she joined the Amazons. This one, like, she's taking a bath with all of these um, all these women, you know, separate separate baths. So they're in their showers, I guess, whatever you'll call it. But they're all, like, telling her, hey, you look, are you okay? Like, like you look like you have... Um, a burden that you just you need to get off your chest, and you could you could do that here. We we are a loving community. We are open arms. We judgment free. Like you can, whatever. Just we will listen to you. We will accept you. Um, and it's starting to show. Like she's actually starting to come around to the people to to the group. She even actually opens up to the leader toward the end of the episode about how. The night before, she was with this guy who was having an affair, and with on his wife with her, and they got she got angry at him, and she killed him, and she's like the next morning, all the men started dying, and it's like I got away with murder, and I shouldn't be able to do that, and the leader's like, but you did, so yay, um, and that's actually a big moment for Hero because she has been burdening herself with this secret. Uh, I don't even think she told Sam this. And speaking of Sam, he is, I'm not going to say he's in hot water, but he's noticing that Hero is starting to be part of this group. Um, and nobody's really accepting him. Actually gets revealed by one of the other uh, ladies there that, no one's supposed to be alone with Sam. And that, that you know, I shouldn't even be talking to you. But, and she's actually because she was doing that, she gets beat up. Uh, punished. Air quotes, punished. Because of that. But, it is a, it, it's a, it's a moment where Sam realizes, I don't need to be here. The problem is, I honestly think that if, if he leaves, they're going to kill him. So he's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. The only saving grace, and I'm using that in very loose terms, of him staying at this group is uh, heroes there. So, and again, that's I'm using that loosely because she's already starting to fall into the group. And I like this. I like the explanation. Why the last man? At, I'm really enjoying this show. Um... And I, I mean, I can't do, obviously I'm not a weekly show at the moment, so I can't do, you know, week to week breakdowns, but I think on the next episode, there should be two more episodes. Um, I might, I might have a breakdown for that on that one. I, I'm not hundred percent sure because there's also, I think only two more episodes left of walking. Well, one at the time of recording and the time this drops, uh, for this year, at least that's what AMC has been saying. Um, so I don't know if actually Walking Dead's could be like, cause that's only eight episodes, eight episodes, and it's supposed to be 24, and so it's not a mid-season break, but maybe they're breaking it down like into thirds, I don't know. Uh, I haven't watched this week's episode yet, I'll just, well, just watch the two, and then probably report on, or cover those in the next episode. But, um, the, but yeah, why the last man? It's I'm I'm really liking it. I'm like I'm. It, it it's it's a good show. If you guys aren't listening or watching it, check it out. If you haven't watched it up to this point, I think this was episode six, five or six. No, yeah. So ooh, you know what? Let me double check that real quick. Um. Ran out of propane? No need to drive to the store when you can get propane delivery straight to your door with Cinch. C-Y-N-C-H. Cinch brings the tanks to you. 
It's easy and convenient propane home delivery. Here's how it works. Go to cinch.com, that's C-Y-N-C-H dot com. Enter your zip code, select your delivery date, and drop off location. It's really that easy. Just set your used tank out for pickup the night before your delivery, and Cinch handles the rest. There's no ongoing commitment when you try Cinch, and they accept any and all tank brands for exchange. Not a Cinch customer yet? What are you waiting for? New customers can get their first propane tank exchange for just $10 with promo code TANK10 at checkout. That's C-Y-N-C-H dot com, promo code TANK10. Turn up the heat this summer with Cinch, ridiculously easy propane grill tank home delivery. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Visit C-Y-N-C-H dot com slash offer for details. Virginia has a long history of shaping America and our democracy. That's why we're so passionate about making sure every election is safe, secure, and accessible to voters. Virginia Department of Elections officials and volunteers are dedicated to making sure your vote counts. Whether it's a race for school board or for the presidency, we have processes and safeguards to ensure safe, secure, and accessible elections. Learn more at vote.virginia.gov. Five enter detention. I don't think he's breathing. Jesus. I'm calling 911. Four come out alive. Simon's dead. They think one of us did it. Based on the number one New York Times bestseller, One of Us is Lying, a brand new series streaming only on Peacock. Okay, we're at home with Jen, who is taking out the trash. That's right, and goodness, look at that designer sweater and jeans combo. Oh, she is nailing that cozy, casual look. Oh, she's opening the can, and the trash is in. She is working that driveway. Well, with Marshall's amazing prices on designer fall fashions, no one can blame her for feeling this fabulous. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, just look at that lipstick. Better get to Marshall's. Oh, I'm leaving right now. Fabulous brands. Feel good prices at, at Marshall's. Marshall's. This is Robert Langdon. I teach symbology. The suspect called him. From the author of The Da Vinci Code. He wants me to locate an ancient portal. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. This is Robert Langdon. I teach symbology. The suspect called him. From the author of The Da Vinci Code. He wants me to locate an ancient portal. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. Five enter detention. I don't think he's breathing. Jesus. I'm calling 911. Four come out alive. Simon's dead. They think one of us did it. Based on the number one New York Times bestseller, One of Us is Lying, a brand new series streaming only on Peacock. This is Robert Langdon. I teach symbology. The suspect called him. From the author of The Da Vinci Code. He wants me to locate an ancient portal. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. This is Robert Langdon. I teach symbology. The suspect called him. From the author of The Da Vinci Code. He wants me to locate an ancient portal. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. Getting there, I'm getting there. This is the... Yeah, it was six episode. So there's four more. Ooh, November 1st. Hmm, okay. So... Honestly, by this, if you haven't watched it yet, I would just wait the month and then just... You can watch it on Hulu when it's all said and done. Of course, if you haven't watched it yet and you've listened to my breakdown of it... Um... Sorry, sorry, like, look, it's a, it, this, I'm going to be, you know, talking spoilers on these shows. Like, w- you, you guys listen to these shows, you, you know what you're getting. Uh, that being said, we're going to go ahead and take our first ad break. And, uh, like I said before, we don't control the ads, don't control the volume or how many times you hear the same ad. So I'll give you guys a three count so you can turn down the volume just in case. Although, I'll be really honest, uh, we keep saying that the volume, at least for me, uh, has never been bad. So, don't turn it down, I guess. I don't know. You guys do you. Guys do you. Um, but yeah, uh, three, two, one, and we'll be right back. And we are back. Alright, everybody. It's no secret that I am a huge fan of Lock and Key. And the final season or sorry the final trailer for season two 
uh, has dropped. And, guys, I'm so looking forward to this. Uh, the show comes out on October 22nd. Uh, I, I'm i not 100% sure. Because I have a breakdown of season one that I might drop in the feed. Maybe. No promises. Um, it, it, that, that one's going to be a matter of if I have nothing else to uh, for that week, in all honesty, but um, yeah, because like, like uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, myself, uh, my my bu- my best friend, my buddy Ron from co-host of Comic Book Rundown with me, and then Chris from World's Finest True Believers and Marvel Alliance, we are planning to record coverage of season two, which we did for season one, um, so. That one will be a, a special drop uh, on on the Saturday after, uh, two weeks after, a week after, um, to the 30th, whatever, yeah, th- that Saturday, uh, because I wanted to get it out there, uh, not as soon as possible, because I didn't want to spoil everything, but because of the way my episodes are dropping, I didn't want to wait two weeks, because I just didn't want to, yeah, it, you know. My show. I can do what I want. Um, so, anyway. So, we see Nina Locke. She is... It starts out with uh, her basically at what what I can only assume is an AA meeting. Um, or just a meeting in general. Because uh, last season she fell off the wagon hard uh, and caused a lot of problems. Now, comic-wise, it was a scene... Where, which was, I'm going to say it was needed. It was actually, it really was needed in the comic. It was really, really, like, poignant of, of when they did it. So in the show, when they did it, it, it seemed forced um, because, you know, she hadn't had to drop the alcohol the entire season. And then, like, episode seven rolls around and she just had a hard day. And I'm not, look, I'm not chastising everybody. I, my mom passed away you know, a couple years ago, and there's still times where I just, I have to just stop in my tracks because it's like, she's gone. So, like, everybody deals with grief their own way. In the show here, in the comic book, Nina dealt with grief with alcohol. Um, like, she's, she drank constantly. They brought it over to the show, but, like, in the show, she was a recovering alcoholic, which was awesome. Until she had hit the moment where she couldn't. And it happens. I get it. It sucks. The big thing is, though, is that she was able to recover from that. Like, she she had her moment, realized it was wrong, and then came back from it. Um, so, I, I don't know if this is, you know, AA or, or, or what, but it, she's in a meeting. She's talking about her how her husband died and how uh, she moved the family up here to Key House. And is, you know, the kids are adjusting and everything is is just hunky-dory and great. Until, you know, she has no idea. There are things happening that she has no idea about. Now, I'm assuming she is talking about her husband dying. But you never know. Because the way that she, you know, the, the way that Rendell was killed was one of those situations where... Um, Sam Lesser came in and was like, hey, tell me about these keys. You dodge him, what's these keys? And to her knowledge, yeah, but she has no idea what the hell's going on. So that's what I'm assuming she's meaning and not the fact that there's a lot of weird things going on with these keys because the kids are acting weird. Uh, the next scene we see is Kinsey walking on water and it's her in her own, like, head key mind palace. Although I think it's a mind palace because... That key definitely does not look like the head key. It, uh... Let's see here. Um, yeah. Well, no, actually, it might be. It's just, it's very up close. Yeah, that really doesn't look like the the head key, does it? Huh. Oh, you know what? No, it is the head key. I'm thinking of the ghost key. I'm mixing keys up. There's a lot of keys in the show, guys. And the show's... Gonna get a lot more. So, yeah. 
But um, anyway, uh, we get some the mirror freezing. Don't know what's going on with that. That was weird. Then we get Bodhi here. He's explaining to to Tyler and Kinsey. He's like, hey, look, we found a couple keys, and now we automatically think we know what's going on. Uh, but basically, we're still stupid. Like, we have no idea what's going on. And he's saying this as he finds another key. Uh, this key is the Small World key. And for anybody who has read the Small World comic, uh, the key goes to this... It, it, it's a key that looks like Key House. And it goes to this dollhouse that looks like Key House. And when you unlock the Small World house, anything that goes in will come out in Key House but like uh, it's not one for one it's it, it's like perfect example a spider walks into the dollhouse appears in key house and it's a giant spider so uh, to scale that's what that's the word i was looking for it's it's not a one to one scale but it's like a i don't know like a one to 10 scale that's the example i'm giving so it's it's like i said spider walks into the dollhouse like, walks in through the window. No, let's make it simple. Walks in through the door of the dollhouse key house. The giant spider is walking through the door of real key house. Um, and I think we even see it in the this trailer. We saw it in the last one where Clay was like, nope, nope, nope. Um, we see some of the webs. And I think we do see a spider running around at, at one point. So that's that's a thing. Um, we get Eden and Dodge, Gabe. Um, again, spoilers for if you haven't actually watched season one. But um, Eden's like, well, why are you... If you can change your, your look, why are you Gabe and not just Dodge all the time? And Dodge is like, uh, because no one will look at, at Gabe like... Uh, like a villain, they'll look at him like he's just a nerdy little kid. So there you go. And he can, he's obviously he's close to Kinsey. So of course I'm gonna stick with the the one character that has access to all of these keys. Um, a big thing of note, uh, right here this this moment. I know again nobody's seeing this, but at this moment, Bodhi is handing Gabe. The ghost key. I didn't think anything of it because one, it's been a while since I've seen the first season. Um, but I watched a recap, and somebody pointed out that, and because I completely forgot about it, Dodge being this entity, this this evil being, uh, he can't just take the keys. He has to be given the keys. And the Locke family is the basically the, the keeper of the keys. And Bodhi just gave him a key. Like, it, I forgot about that part. And so, of course, he's going to be like, yes, this is great. I, I, I'm, everything's starting to fall into place. Uh, we have a scene here where Eden and Gabe are in front of the, the Omega door. The black door um, with I don't know who these guys are, but they're down there in the caves with a couple of people. And Eden has got the crown of shadows on. So she's controlling the shadows and the shadows uh, basically attack. And I'm going to assume kill these guys. Not totally sure. It's going to be weird. Uh, we saw this in the other trailer where Gabe is making a key. I do want to point out that and I, I didn't say this last time. I really wish I would have, but he makes his key and he, then he breaks up with the mold and then he grabs the key with his hand, which is still flaming hot. So I don't know what's going on there, but this key, man, this key looks wicked. Um, so I don't know what's going to go on with that one. Uh, giant or big, big reveal here. We've got Duncan having the head key used on him. And he's one, you know, in the last season, 
we see he has his memories like in these jars in these painters jars uh spread all over well when they was found it was all over like around the street but then Tyler and Kinsey like scooped them up and put them in a bag so this is going to be a big reveal um then we see Tyler himself what I'm assuming is Tyler because uh, we see him with some uh, Smith goggles on, and he looks like he's been working. But he's also could have been, like, scenes cut from Gabe doing it. But it it's made you, it's made to think that Tyler is making a key. Um, so we're, we're getting more key, we're getting new keys, we're getting more keys. Uh, we're getting old keys brought in, but, like, we're getting keys this season. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Um... I think we see, it looks like there's a scene, I'm assuming, with uh, Scott in his mind because he's being attacked by mannequins. I, I don't know. Maybe actually that could be something else. Then we see this house falling over. I don't know what house this is. I said this last time, um, but I don't know what's going on there. But it's, it. they're in, I mean, it's going to be an episode, more than likely, uh, where they're in this house. And it looks like it's on the cliff and it's about ready to fall. I don't know. Here, here is another big thing. We see revolutionary soldiers in front of the black door. Well, it's in front of the the portal that will be covered up by a black door. It, dude, we're gonna history lesson. I love that. I'm so here for that. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, the mannequins are creepy. There's that spider. Um. So yeah, it's. It's going to be awesome. October 22nd. Um, this show, I'm loving it so far. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. This is, it's going to be good. You guys don't even know. Or you do know. You probably are watching it too. I don't know. I hope you're watching it. Uh, so that's our first, um, first trailer. Uh, our second trailer, whoop, I can't spell the word right, there we go. Um, now this one is not a comic, however, uh, I do love me some Resident Evil. And it came out uh, yesterday, so time recording, Thursday. Um, Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Uh, I know I know one person in our group chat would had some mixed feelings, and another one was like, it's not my tempo. Look, I love Resident Evil. I went and saw all six of the previous ones in theaters. Um, I think at one point I was, especially for the last like two, I was like the only one. But I love the games. The movies were, the first two were good. And then they kind of became shite after that. But eh, I still enjoy them. I still have fun. So, let's go ahead and go to this trailer, though. We start out with what is obviously Claire, because of the um, jacket, is... No, not Claire. Right? No, yeah, it's Claire. Claire Redfield. No, not Claire Redfield. Shit, what's her name? Oh, uh, that's... Look, okay. As much as I love the movies, it's been, it's been a while, so I... Uh... That, that one's on me. That one is on me. Um, let's find that cast. Oh, no, I was right. It was Claire. Okay. See, I was thinking Jill Valentine. But no, that's... that. I was... I was wrong. But yeah, so we see Claire. And she's riding into Raccoon City. And... Oh, I, they also give the date. September 30th, 19, 1998. So... Thank you for that. That is awesome. Because that's, I think, when the game came out. I could be completely wrong. That sounds about right. And she meets up with her brother, Chris Redfield. Um, I, I watched this with a friend. And it's played by Robbie Amell. And if anybody knows who Robbie Amell is, um, you know, he is, was... The, fir, the original first half of Firestorm from Legends of... Not Legends. Flash. Back when Flash was good. Um, yeah. So... 
Nope, that's not what I want. Sorry. Um, he he was like, well, that doesn't he doesn't look big enough to be to be uh, Chris. I'm like, well, may, maybe he's not Chris. I knew I knew he was Chris. Um, yeah, so that is gonna be good. You got those two kind of meeting up and and uh, figuring out what's going on. Um, was that Neil McDonald? Ooh, I didn't see that last time. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, oh, interesting. Neil Mc McDonald. Don Don. I can never say his name right. Uh, but it was, um, oh, he was on Arrow and Legends. Dark. There you go. He was, um, not Nora Dark, because that was, that's who he, his daughter was in the show. He was, I'm trying not to edit, so I'm trying to banter as much as I can. Because I don't want to edit things if I can avoid it. But banter's fun. Right? Damien Dark. Wow. Got him. Oh. Look, it's been a long week. Like I said earlier, that's why I'm not doing news. Um, Yeah, but he's in it. Wait, who's he playing? Sorry about that. I went like three pages down. And I got to get back to where I was at. Uh, William Birkin. Um, new guy. Must be a new guy. Uh, but we are actually getting a lot. Okay, so we're getting Claire in this movie. We're getting Leon. We're getting Jill Valentine. Chris, obviously. Ada Wong, which is which is cool. Albert Wesker, which Albert Wesker is being played by Tom uh, Hopper, who is number one in Umbrella Academy. So awesome there. Uh, Brad Vickers, Nathan Dales. Uh, I know that name sounds familiar. Vickers, I mean, I think he's one of the ones that gets. Gets killed off quick. I feel like that's... I feel like that's accurate. Oh. Donald Lowe's in this. Loke? 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 Yes. Uh, who was Harvey Bullock in Gotham. He was Nicolas Cage's friend in Gotham... Or not Gotham. In Ghost Rider. That's not bad. He was also the dickhead in Blade. So, very cool. Uh, yeah, that's actually kind of awesome. But I, uh, I inadvertently paused the trailer at this scene with this, I'm going to say a creature with like three eyes. Actually, I think it's just a mask, but like turned to the side saying like shushing. Uh, didn't see that the first time around. That's kind of creepy. I'll take it though. Um, yeah, there's. Like, we're getting uh, the raccoon police. Oh, there we go. The raccoon police uh, obviously trying to stop people. We see this scene where this truck driver who is infected uh, basically drop his rig, or the rig turns over in front of the police department in Raccoon City. And basically all hell's breaking loose there in the city. And... Yeah, that is him. Holy shit, I didn't think I... Okay, so Donald Lowe's playing a cop. That's awesome. Um, but we do we do get the dogs, the infected dogs, so... Like, I I see that, and all I can think of is is Mila Jovovich just drop-kicking the dogs in the first movie, the original movie. Ah, uh, that's... Yeah, those are awesome. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're starting to see the affected... Uh, coming and it's, it's di a couple different levels. We're getting the like infected with the like the dogs. Everything's breaking down. We get the affected just infected. Uh, like the driver, he was his eyes were turning red and he just obviously couldn't handle himself. Uh, there were zombies. I'm gonna say it at the gate and they. Uh... That's what I should turn on. Um, obviously it's. Trying to, to burst through. I think even one of them breaks... One of the zombies breaks a car window and takes somebody out. Uh, they haven't officially said T-Virus. So I want to point that out. Um, so we do get the mansion. Yay. That's going to be kind of cool. 
we also get a backstory, another history lesson. So that's good. And it's going to be them uh, from the from the looks here because it looks like Claire and probably Leon, maybe uh, at least Claire um, finds a film reel. And she, of course, she's got to hit play and watch it. And that's that's going to be our history lesson. So, yeah, that's going to be kind of cool. Oh, it looks like Chris is there too. Basically the group. Um, but, the, yeah, it's the mansion. And, oh, yeah, we should split up. And that's a bad idea, especially in that mansion. But whatever, it's fine. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the mansion looks amazing. So, there's a scene here. Yep, here it is. They get their first um, encounter with... A T virus zombie, and he's eating somebody. Can't tell who. Oh, I don't think it's Jill or Ada. Might be one of the randoms. Um, and turns like the. It's basically a scene from the first game when you first meet a zombie. They, the, it's that cut scene of the zombie stops and slowly turns to the light, and then obviously he's going to attack. So we're obviously gonna be getting people. People are gonna die. It's gonna. It's gonna happen. Some of these guys are gonna not make it, which makes me kind of think. Because all these characters are important to the video game. Now they did show up in the original movie, the original set. Um, I don't. They none of them like, you know, Chris and. Hell, even Jill, like, never actually died. She got mind-controlled 18 different times, but she never actually died. Um, but, like, none of them... None of them died in that one. I don't think... I don't think anybody's safe in this one. Like, I can see them actually killing off some of these some of these people. But who knows? I don't know. Like, I'm again, I'm here for it. That dog looks awesome, by the way. With the face all, all, all messed up. Now, this guy... Um, this, the liquor, the brain looks bigger, which I don't think I like, but yeah, you know, I'm fine with it. You know, in all honesty, I'm fine with it. Uh, but there was a creature there. I don't know what this creature was, but he looked huge. Uh, here we go. Is that the guy? Yep. Um, yeah, that actually looks like bad CGI. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that one. And that's just in the trailer. Uh, God, I wish I could remember. Because he definitely looks familiar. It's this giant, hulking like creature coming down from the ceiling. So it makes me think of, for anybody who has played Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the first boss you face in the Great Deku Tree uh, it's that spider scorpion creature. It's like that, like the giant arms and the mouth. Um, but like it has like two different sets, like one mouth and eyes at the base. But it has a couple eyes on the sh what would be the shoulders and teeth growing out here and there. Um, obviously, it's going to be the monster that they are pulling from. Um, God, I really wish I could remember it. It's, I will be honest. It's, like I said, I love the games. It's been forever since I played them. Don't know what this guy is. Ugh. It's, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. And Gary's barking. I'm sure that's fine too. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, November 24th, I think is what they said. I think it was what was said. Where is that at? I think I passed it. Yeah, I believe it's November 24th is when it will uh, hit theaters. So, I'm here for it. I'm okay with it. I have, I, I want to see it. Like I said, I love Resident Evil. And, um... I... It, it got to the point, I was like, I'm not going to say so in love with this, this, uh, this series, but... I actually was, like, writing a fan fiction. Like, a continuation. Never did finish that. Probably never will. 
Uh, let, let, let's be honest. But, um, yeah, it, dude, this, this series. Yeah, November 24th. There we go. Um, I'm here for it. It's going to be great. Uh, so let's move on to our last. Uh, nope, that's not what I want. Our last trailer. Uh, this one, uh, I literally just saw because I think it just dropped uh, yesterday as of October 7th as well. Lost in Space Season 3. It's the uh, the final season. So, I'm trying to remember exactly, because it's been a while since I, I watched the season two that actually is longer than season one. Um, if I remember correctly, like they, at the end of season two, they were with this colony, this group that was able to get off whatever planet they were on because the planet was actually getting destroyed. Um, but the Robinsons finally got like, it finally got lost. This actually finally got to the point where they are lost in space. Took three seasons, but hey, they got there. Uh, this one starts out with uh, Will Robinson. And again, it's been a couple years, like at least a year and a half to two years since they filmed it. So Will, the actor, is um, older and it's apparent. But he is, you know, he's writing this or recording this message, his final message. He's basically saying, like, I, I apologize. Like, I really wish I, you know, I was trying to save everybody and really wish it would have actually worked out but we see their we see their ship uh it looks like it's falling to the onto this planet and there's another ship behind them now i don't know if it's the same ship that the robot is from from like that that group of aliens but that seems to be that's gonna be my guess only because the excuse me um that Anytime they found a ship, or even the world in the last season, was uh, it had something to do with Robot and his race. So, I would not be surprised if if uh, if that is what we are going to see in if that's who that ship is. But you know, never know. Could be wrong. Um. Yeah, it says it's coming out in December, uh, December 1st. So, was that another person? Hold on. Nope, that's not what I want. Pause right here. I don't remember you. I think they get a third, or you. No, no, that's the same doctor. Um, yeah, I don't know who this, uh, this lady is. So th there's a shot of the family with, um, uh, or... Oh, no, that is the one leader guy. Man, I really do need to watch the end of the uh, season two. Because I'm pretty sure he was on a separate ship, which means she is part of the group. Maybe they do get in contact with the other group. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, maybe. Um. So... Oh, okay, they find... Let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to... Again, trying to watch this without subtitles because it doesn't give me option for subtitles and I don't want to, you know, copyright infringement on on the show. Not that I'm... Whatever. Um, but the, the one scene, we get what looks like Robot's hand um, scraping up against some, some of the walls and then we see... Mrs. Robinson, she's really sorry. No, that's Jackson. Damn it. Really ruined that joke. Um, see her backing away. So I could be two different shots. Could be the same shot. Uh, her being threatened. My guess is if it is, it's probably a different robot again. Similar to last season. Um, maybe being threatening. Will and Robot himself, they looks like they're in some sort of cave and they find some another ship. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't know. 
a lot of action scenes here, a lot of quick scenes. Oh, no, that was another robot. Okay, yeah. So, I I really enjoyed the first two seasons. Um, well, let me rephrase that. I enjoyed the second season of Lost in Space better than I enjoyed the first season. Um, so, this being the final season, and probably going to be ten episodes, more than likely. Uh, I'm here for it. I'm fine with it. Let's, uh, coming out December 1st on Netflix. Yeah, sure. I'm in three seasons. Really? It's all kind of unique. Like free, even for like lock and key. I think I said this before. Um, I can see three, four seasons max. Um, like it's, I, you, you drag it out longer than that and it's just going to get redundant. So with them only doing three seasons for this, I'm really happy because now you're telling, and I've said this on other podcasts, you're telling your story in the time you want, uh, in the episode amount, you you won't have really any filler. I love it. Um, with that being said, I would talk about the Stranger Things um, trailer. That one came out a few weeks ago. Looks cool. I think I like it because it is doing something different. It looks like it's doing something different. It looks like it's the group investigating a haunted house. Um, I'm not going to watch it and break it down here. Only because uh, I'm already at an hour. And I don't want to go longer than really I need to. Um, but yeah, Stranger Things is another one where I'm, I'm looking forward to watching. But yeah, all, all of these are. Like the lock and key obviously looking looks great. I'll be watching that day one. Uh Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. I'm here for that. Gonna go, go go see that probably opening weekend. Uh, Lost in Space. I don't know if I'll watch it opening weekend, but but or the the day one on, on when it airs. But I'll definitely be watching it within the month of December. And then whenever Strange Thing comes out, I'll be watching that. So let's take our last ad break. And uh, we will be right back. Five enter detention. I don't think he's breathing. Jesus. I'm calling 911. Four come out alive. Simon's dead. They think one of us did it. Based on the number one New York Times bestseller, One of Us is Lying, a brand new series streaming only on Peacock. You will solve the great mystery. Streaming only on Peacock. This is Robert Langdon. The suspect called him. I teach symbology. He wants me to locate an ancient portal buried within the capital. From the author of The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. It's your dad. The people who took him want me to find a piece of a very old puzzle. And executive producers Ron Howard and Brian Grazer. We have to finish this or my dad is dead. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Streaming now with new episodes every Thursday. Only on Peacock. You will solve the great mystery. Streaming only on Peacock. This is Robert Langdon. The suspect called him. I teach symbology. He wants me to locate an ancient portal buried within the capital. From the author of The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. It's your dad. The people who took him want me to find the piece of... 